hi guys welcome or welcome back to another video thank you guys so much for coming back to another video guys if it's your first video you know what to do here hit that like button subscribe 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 welcome to the anderson's family you know how we do it here guys authentic canadian content where we share our journey and filter the subscribers welcome back to another video guys so i'll be doing a story time right now for you guys and what i'll be talking about is the first time i experienced racism in canada guys this is a topic that not many people like to talk about and it's something that a lot of people like to sweep underneath the carpet but i'm gonna be talking about um, my first experience dealing with racism in canada right now if you're new here guys i'm living in a small town called grand prairie which is located in alberta um northern alberta to be exact population 70,000 people more so um dominated by Caucasian, right now before coming to grand prairie i spent all my life in jamaica now if you guys know anything about jamaica jamaica um is 99 percent black so i have never experienced anything not even remotely um similar to racism in jamaica i mean there's classism and stuff like that in jamaica where it depends on where you live your job, your income stream, stuff like that, right? But in terms of um, to be, um, I'd say, discriminated or stigmatized against just because of the color of your skin, I've never had to experience that before coming I to Canada. I have no prior knowledge of how to navigate um, the space or how it would make me feel as an immigrant in Canada. Now, let me first say that this is my own experience. And uh, you may have experienced something different if it is that you're living in Canada. Uh, depend on where you're living and you know different folks different strokes but this is my own experience and this is what i have encountered now um what i'd like to say is i've encountered racism on many different occasions here um in alberta but what i'll be talking about are the story time that i'll be sharing is the first time i experienced it and how did it make me feel and how did i like overcome it or navigate it now let me first say that um, when you feel like you're being um, discriminated against, it's not a good feeling, right? It's not a good feeling and it's something that can cause you to question your self-esteem and your overall um, personality. Just every single thing that you thought you know would become in question when you feel like you're being discriminated against. Now, when I first landed in Canada, I didn't know that Canada... Um, would have showed me that side per se because i know we always see in the states and different things that when in the states outward racism and stuff like that but canada is known as the nice country so i wasn't necessarily experienced um expecting any form of racism when i landed now to say the least um racism is definitely present here from my own experience but the racism that exists in canada is a lot more covert and by what i mean by that it's low-key right so there's a lot of um, passive aggressions there's a lot of passive aggressions that you might misconstrue as not meaning meaning anything but it's actually um geared towards you being black or being brown or of a different descent i've experienced a lot of passive aggression especially in the workplace um in terms of um different different things different passive aggression now the first experience I had with racism was when I actually um, lived in an apartment at the time and there was an elevator. Now, the elevator was empty and I was the only person in the elevator. Now, the elevator stopped at a floor and then there was a couple, a male and a female, Caucasian of course, who wanted to come up in the elevator obviously but when the elevator door opened and they saw that uh, there was a black person they immediately said no it's fine we'll take the other one now the elevator is totally empty it was totally empty i was the only one in the elevator and if if you guys know anything about elevator it can hold a good amount of people up to 2500 pounds and yeah i don't think i weigh 2500 so i don't know why they wouldn't want to come into the elevator other than it's the color of my skin right now there was little things before that that, that after that incident happened i started to look at the bits and pieces of other things that was happening and then it all started to make sense right now i am 100 confident that they did not come into the elevator because there was a black person in the elevator and 
a lot of persons might come up with different reasons might say different excuses but the point of the matter is you know racism when you feel it and that is what i would say to any new immigrant who's coming um you know it once once it is present you'll feel it right it's not something that you can pinpoint clear cut but you feel it when it happens to you and that was the very first time i felt um, discriminated against no big deal because I get the elevator for myself, right? That's what most persons would say. But at the end of the day, you don't want to be treated differently than anybody else. If it is that if it was a Caucasian person in there, if you go in the elevator with them, come in the elevator with me. If you wouldn't go in the elevator with them, don't come in the elevator with me either, right? Because racism is not just um in terms of the racism is not just displayed negatively in terms of um if it is that you're gonna open the door for me just because I'm black, that is racism. The very same thing that you do to another race, do it to me as well, right? Now, there's an epidemic, I think, in Canada where a lot of um, racism exists, but it's not really talked about. It's not really discussed about. And um, persons usually sweep it under the carpet, as I said in the beginning of the video. But it is really present, right? And for new immigrants coming from countries like Jamaica where we don't have to navigate that space, it's, it's very difficult for us to um, understand and, and, and try to come to grips of like what it is really like to be stigmatized against, right? Now, I always say that as a black person in Canada, you have to work 10 times harder than um, an, uh, another race because the truth of the matter is we are at the bottom of the food chain. That's just the truth, right? So you might be doing the very same job and you're doing it at a high skill set, but really and truly, in order to be seen, you have to be working a lot harder than, you know, your, your counterpart. And that is something that I think is a negative in Canada. And it's more so in the remote towns. Now, I live in a very remote city and that is why probably I'm experiencing, I have experienced it so many times, but a lot of persons in the big city might not even experience it or they might experience it it depends on the individual right as i said this is my own experience but what i find is that when like the bigger cities in canada they are a lot more diverse and a lot more inclusive but like for example like where i live there are persons who have never seen a black person um up close and personal so when i say a black person they tend to steer when when that's and i go into a store Every, <laughs> sometimes everybody stop what they're doing and then just start stare at you like legit them just start stare at you like kids everybody's just like looking at you and sometimes we feel so uncomfortable that we just either come out the store or we just stare back right you don't want to have to do that though but it's like it's like you can cut the tension sometimes they go um it can be anything it can be a restaurant you go inside a restaurant and you're the only black person in the restaurant and then everybody just turn around and look at you like you know like like oh there's a black person in the restaurant um and that is very uncomfortable for us as individuals um and that i think is discrimination and that i think is you know even marginalization in some what sense what i would say to persons who are probably i'd say fascinated <laughs> with black persons is please stop it makes us feel very uncomfortable it makes me feel very uncomfortable if if it is that another race would come into the restaurant and you'd steer and then that's why you're steering if because you're just fast then that's fine but if you're steering because there's just another black person coming into the restaurant please stop it makes us feel very uncomfortable right so like sometimes i can because i have friends of all different races so sometimes i talk to them about it and they'll be like yo they are just naturally fascinated <laughs> it's very frustrating guys right now there's so many other incidents that has happened even since that incident that um, is, there's simply too much to count, right? Now, what I was saying though, that that's my own experience and probably somebody who is in a remote town might not even experience um, any form of passive aggression or, or, or racism or subliminal racism or anything like that. But I and many other persons have, have experienced it, right? Now, another incident that has happened was when earlier this year when we went to um a hotel um in edmonton it wasn't necessarily in the city of edmonton but it was um in us in a on the outskirts of edmonton per se and we were on a particular floor of the hotel 
Um, I think we're on the eighth floor of the hotel. And then Nuts, myself, and the two girls were waiting on the elevator. And then there was a couple walking towards the elevator to go down to the pool as well, because we wanted to go to the pool. And then the couple was like probably three kids, mommy, daddy, and like grandparents, Caucasian, of course. They were walking towards the elevator, but they were chatting. So there was, wasn't really looking that, that somebody was actually waiting on the elevator. As soon as the gentleman looked up and saw that we were waiting on the elevator as well, they turned back and they took the stairs. Now, how I know that they ended up took the stairs is because we saw them at the pool when we went down, right? So shortly after we were at the pool, we saw them coming through the stairs towards the pool. Nonetheless, the pool was populated. So we were, you know, just waiting a little bit, just kind of waiting on our foot a little bit, but not really fully into the water. As soon as we went into the water, the pool empty. The pool got empty. When a black person enters the pool in Alberta, Canada, As soon as the black persons came out the pool, and everybody came out the pool. Everybody was just now not in the pool. They were just like doing them one thing, like not making it seem as if like, you know, like it was just like them not, not wanting to be in the pool. But real and truly, they came out the pool because we went into the pool and it was so obvious. Then we came out the pool and as soon as we came out the pool, they went into the pool, right? And this is the same family plus some others who decided that they weren't going to take the elevator with us, right? Now, stuff like that happen, and it really kind of makes you feel inferior, in a sense, and you're like, why is stuff like that happening in Canada, right? And the truth of the matter is a lot of persons have experienced it. There are persons in other provinces who, provinces who said that persons outright come to them and tell them to go back to their own country, um, different things like that. Like, a lot, I don't know, I do not understand it. I cannot understand racism. But um, what I can say is that it's present, right? It is 100% present and it's low key, but a lot of persons try to pretend like it's not there, but it is there, right? Now, if, it's your, if you're watching this video and you are one of those persons who believe that um, you are superior and everybody else is inferior, cut the crap. <laughs> That's what I would say. I would say cut the crap and just see people as people and let everybody feel welcome in Canada because Canada is a very diverse country and almost everybody apart from the, um, the natives was some immigrant to Canada. Whether second, third, fourth, fifth generation immigrant, somebody for you decided to immigrate to Canada. So please stop pretending like the land belongs to you, unless you're a native, of course, right? It's an inclusive country and it's a very diverse country and everybody is welcome as long as you po contribute positively towards the society. You don't own the land. You don't. So stop pretending like say, oh, it's yours and nobody else should come into it, right? A lot of, a lot of black people too have the mentality there too, like a crab in a barrel mentality like, that um, it belongs to them and then even fight out other black people too in some way, some way. The anyways, my deviated to other topic. What I'm trying to make is be open-minded when you migrate to Canada. Depending on where you go, you might experience racism. If you do, don't take it personal. It's not on you, it's on, on the person, all right? Just take it from me, develop character, be strong in yourself, be confident in yourself, and you definitely will be able to overcome that as well. You, half the times you're not gonna see it out towards blatantly, but there's a lot of passive aggression that you have to overcome, all right? Anyways, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Don't hesitate to hit that like button, share, subscribe, and drop a comment. All right, guys, see you guys in the next video.